Awesome. Uh, but uh, uh, that, that t- is totally cool. Have there ever been any sections where you and the other actors have basically looked at each other, especially with four, and just gone, what the hell does this mean? Or you just need a refresher because you, you know this, this entire thing covers 20 years of, of games. Yeah, well, sometimes, well, there's a whole thing, uh, I can't say anything about four, you know, there, <laughs> yeah. there, are, there are things that, um, there are questions that come up, this really occurred during Metal Gear 2, which still doesn't make any sense to me, I, I don't know, Definitely. I don't, I don't know what it was, I don't know if it was a training exercise or a dream or, a, you know, what it was. I think a lot but, of people have that, that question. Well, it was very, you know, really sort of stepped off the deep end, and so there were a lot of there were a lot of questions there. Um, but uh, and and you know, in four, we do go back over a lot of the, the the vast history of the game, and so I would try to make clear on you know, well, who's Raiden talking about, and what's his relationship to to that person, and what's my relationship to that person, and and wasn't this the person that you know cut off my finger or you know <laughs> shot my eyeball out or. <laughs> Whatever you know, it's it's. Uh, I do like to try to be as clear as possible, and they're very good about like Ryan Payton, who I'm sure you know from uh, Konami. Definitely, he was there through all of the recording, and you know he's very steeped in the lore. So, so he and I would really sort of get into it and say, well, w- you know, w- where did this character come from, and what's the basic history, and we would go over it all, and then that also is is very good for performance as well. David, would you say that uh, would you say that you keep in touch with some of the other actors, considering that you guys have been working together for so long, or do you just not get the opportunity to see them that often? Yeah, no, absolutely not. I, I try not to stay in contact with any of them. <laughs> um, no, I, you know, uh, it's well, okay. I'm you can be honest. With, uh, I'm friends with Sniper Wolf and Mei Ling. You know, I, I I've known them for years before Metal Gear. Um, the Colonel, I see around town. He's with my voiceover agent, so I see him from time to time. Uh, and Otacon, uh, Christopher Randolph, you know, I, I, um, I really only see him when we record, but we have such a good time. This, this time, he lives in New York, and so he would fly out for the games, and, and this time I, we had him over to dinner, so he's, he's more of a friend now, so. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Um, uh, Deblin wants to know if uh, if you can think of anything that was uh, particularly interesting that uh, might have hit the cutting room floor at some point during one of the games. No, I don't think anything. It's, I don't think there is a cutting room. <laughs> <laughs> if there if there was, I think they'd be a lot shorter. Um, yeah, no, not not that I'm aware of. I mean, I'm pretty sure that everything we record goes into the games. Uh, you know, I, I I I believe to, as a more serious answer, I believe everything is is edited. Uh, you know, and cut before the script is put out. You know, I think they really they decide what it's going to be in advance. Plus, it's not like it's not like a movie where you're trimming it to to meet an hour and a half or a two hour uh, running time. You know, it's, the running time is what it is. And I think with Metal Gear, they feel the more the better. You know, that's um, so. There's not a lot of there's not a lot of cutting going on after the fact. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, Dr. Danger would like to know, uh, are you a big gamer? And if so, uh, what do you think about GTA 4 since that comes out on Tuesday? Uh, well, Doctor, I, I am a big gamer. Um, <laughs> I, well, I'm a very, I'm a very specific gamer. You know, there's, there's, there's types of games that I like and I'll play, but I don't, I don't play everything. Uh, but I have to say Grand Theft Auto is, is pretty much my favorite game series, um, and uh, every time a Grand Theft Auto comes out, my wife just kisses me goodbye for three months. <laughs> and in fact, I'll tell, you, I'll tell you another story. When I was in, uh, I was in London working on Watchmen with Paul Greengrass for six months, and and uh, and I was just stuck in a hotel room in Soho for for six months, just writing and writing and writing. And I only had one friend there who I who I rarely saw, and so I was really stuck in my room that whole time. It's really bleak. And um, all that English food. And what I did was I had the uh, the hotel went out and they bought me a place. Well, they didn't. Uh, it was the, the movie studio paid for the uh, PlayStation. But um, uh, and I would play Grand Theft Auto three so I could pretend I was back home in Los Angeles uh, <laughs> at night. So I would spend my days in in England and my nights in uh, San Andreas. Awesome. Oh. Yeah. Very nice. Uh, uh, David, do you remember in Metal Gear Solid on the PlayStation 1 when you said, Metal Gear? Metal Gear. That was uh, awesome. Well, well, 
<laughs> well, actually, um, it's well known that that uh, you've played and beaten all of the Metal Gear games that you've done voiceover work for. Which yeah. one happens to be your favorite of of the entire series? Uh, Metal Gear Three. Uh, I think that that is. Just an astounding game. I, I, you know, I love the story and the and the performances on Metal Gear One, um, and the stuff I love about Metal Gear Two as well. But but Metal Gear Three was sort of that's where it really all came together. And I loved stepping back into that other character and seeing all that history. I loved the gameplay of the um, like the sniper fight. I just see. I like I like kind of Zen games. You know, I love, that's why I like the stealth action of uh, of Metal Gear. And and so that 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 sniper battle where you're going back and forth between those two massive environments trying to hunt down this guy who was literally up in the mountains hunting for you, I, I just thought it was astounding. And and, um, and then the final fight in the, with, the, uh, with the boss and the, and the flowers and her in the white suit, and I just thought it was so beautiful and so, so you know, brilliantly executed uh I, I have to say that's my that's my favorite one so far although I, i'm very excited about metal gear 4 i have a quick question for you also in in light of that do you is it weird for you to go back and play a game and hear your own performance throughout the entire franchise or is that just something you've become accustomed to well you never totally get used to it i mean there's there's things that you know in the first one i hadn't really gotten control of the voice yet and so there's things that make me cringe in the first one <laughs> like when i said metal gear you know, <laughs> I, I, I think and i think that came out of i think that came out of uh i i kept saying uh metal gear and they said no it's not metal gear it's metal gear and i said well why is it why is it that and they said, it just is. <laughs> say it like that they said say it like richard gear so that's what's running through my head every time I say, "Wow, Richard Gear." <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, uh, so I can't remember what what the question was. What, um, no, yeah, I was just is wondering. It weird to, is it weird to hear? Yeah, you know what's really weird is when I get shot or <laughs> any of the impact things or or getting electrocuted. You know, that stuff just. I remember doing it, and it sort of hits you in the gut when you hear it. So, I, you know, playing it, it sort of seizes up my body while I while I while I listen to it. But uh, but all the same, it's still pretty it's pretty freaking cool. Yeah, awesome. Hear your own voice doing all that. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Um, a couple of our readers have some interesting uh, requests and questions about uh, about your use of the snake voice uh, outside of the game. Uh, Dude next door wants to know if you've ever used it at uh, per se like a McDonald's or something to uh, speed up the kid behind the counter if they happen to be a Metal Gear fan. Or I would like to know if you've ever gone into the drive-through and ordered a Big Mac as Snake. <laughs> well, you know, the funny thing about the snake voice, the people that know it, you do it for them, and they just their faces drop and it's just a whole uh, you know amazing experience people that don't know it which is a huge amount of people <laughs> are a moron so um but i did use it uh i went to see um i went to see death of a salesman at the uh, amazon theater with my wife and two friends and and uh you know a very cultured evening i think it was brian dennehy was in it it's wonderful the wonderful recent remake uh, what's that it was the recent remake a few years ago that's right. That's right. The re restaging of the whole thing, and and, uh, and there were two people in right in front of my wife and I who were just making out like it was a like a high school drive-in or something, and and like lip smacking and and just just the, like like this guy got his first kiss at the beginning of the show, and so they were just going for it, and uh, finally it was too obnoxious to handle, and I leaned down right into the guy's ear, and he wasn't concentrating on me, obviously, and I got right into his ear, and I said, get a room. <laughs> and this guy shot up out of his seat, and, and the girl kept trying to make out with him, and he was like, no, 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 because <laughs> he didn't hear it, and uh, it was incredibly effective. It also works on my dog. That's awesome. <laughs> that <is> awesome. <laughs> Uh, on a or on a similar sort of but different note, uh, Vinyl Warrior. I think this is a great request. Um, wants to know if a you good could, name. It, yeah, uh, if you could do an answering machine recording of Snake's voice for our listeners to copy out of the podcast and put on their phone. Uh, his suggestion is something along the line of, "The person you're looking for isn't here, but don't worry, I'm searching. In the meantime, leave a message beyond the beep." So if you uh, have, if you can just do any sort of uh, answering machine message, I think that would uh, they would love that. All right, well, let me step inside. It might be a little quieter. 
Hello, this is Snake. The person you're trying to reach can't come to the phone right now because we're out hunting Metal Gear. Please, leave a message. All right, that was probably the greatest thing. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. I think That's, I'm going to have to use that on my stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 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 Now. <laughs> awesome. Uh, well, uh, and our, our last piece of reader mail, we're not done with you, but our last piece of reader mail that we have is uh, from 2779, wants to know, uh, in the showdown of Solid Snake versus Jack Bauer versus Chuck Norris, who would win that one? Well, I think, uh, I think if you stack Jack Bauer up on top of Chuck Norris, they might be as tall as Snake. So uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give it to Snake on that one. Very that good. Awesome. Know, look, look, I respect both of those men immensely, but once you've, once you've fought a walking nuclear battle tank with a fair hand... <laughs> He, you know, Chuck Norris just doesn't cut it anymore. <laughs> he does Sweet. cure cancer with his tears, though. <laughs> <laughs> he does what? He cures cancer with his tears, except that he never cries. <laughs> oh, well, it's a shame, because that would really come in handy. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Um, so what what upcoming projects do you happen to have uh, on your plate, considering that Metal Gear is, is pretty much done, there's no more post-work that you necessarily have to do on, on the project? Yeah. Um, well, uh, well, the ones coming out, obviously the big ones, Metal Gear 4 is coming out this summer. I've got Watchmen coming out next uh, March. And um, and then the other things I can't really tell you about, their their projects. I have a film that I'm setting up to direct uh, hopefully this summer. And um, just a, I just have a number of film projects I'm, I'm working on, but they're all, you know, they're all confidential, unfortunately. Could- could that possible directing bid be uh, the resurrection of Black Widow? I know it's one of your favorite, if not your favorite, uh, character. Um, unfortunately, it is not the resurrection of Black Widow, although yeah. I would love to see them do that. And please have your readers uh, send emails to uh, Marvel. Problem with problem with Black Widow, we, we got killed um, the week that uh, Eon Flux came out. And then it was sort of widely understood that... that uh, hot women badasses weren't going to open a movie uh, because of Eon Flux, which didn't seem particularly fair because I, I don't think I would have made my movie the same way. But um, uh, And then it hasn't been picked up since because Marvel is only doing their big, you know, their expensive pictures out of their own production deal. So, uh, so hopefully they will go back and and start looking at, you know, thirty, thirty five million dollar movies again and then hopefully Black Widow will be on their list because I'm I I am a fan of the character. I'm very happy with the, the script, uh, and uh, I would really like to do it. So so have your fans write them and just say, Where's our Black Widow? They will, don't worry. <laughs> write in now, <laughs> the <young> listeners. <laughs> They should. It's it be a kick-ass movie. The, the, the thing is, my movies are are a little darker than than uh, I think Marvel is always comfortable with. You know, we sort of push the edge with the X Men movies. Watchmen's going to be R rated, uh, and I would want uh, Black Widow to be R rated. Although we could probably get away with PG thirteen, but I, I, you know, I like a pretty edgy movie, and so that puts me on the edge of acceptability for Marvel. No, you keep going with the R rating. That's fine with us. Ryan well, just can't watch them. I agree. Just, um, <laughs> I'm just no. not allowed to watch them, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let me let me thank you for your time. Uh, the interview has been okay. great. Uh, I know our readers are going to love listening to this. Cool. Well, it's my pleasure, guys. I'm a big fan of uh, IGN and and. Uh, and I really appreciate your uh, interest in my endeavors. <laughs> great. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. All right. So that was great. Wow. That was, great. That was awesome. Yeah. Woo. Very. Uh, uh, once again, thanks to uh, to David for uh, for calling in. That was a fantastic interview. Very cool. And uh, I know we had a um, ton of reader questions. So I asked probably about a dozen questions on there, but the list of stuff we had was immense. A lot of them were kind of the same sorts of things, but reader feedback was.